Hi, this is Kim. I'm here at Mind Over Matter Meditation Center in Holliston, Mass. And this is our Friday forecast for Friday, March 11th, 2022. So we are in the second quarter moon phase in the last lunar cycle of the solar year. So the sun is now in Pisces and the sun will enter Aries, which is the first sign of the zodiac on March 20th, when we also uh, celebrate the spring equinox. So lots of new beginnings. And like we had talked about in the last video, really this final push, this real final piece of the gestation period before the rebirth. Uh, so spring always brings with it this beautiful sense of rebirth. And I think this year in particular, it is going to feel even more alive. There's really going to be this very alivening and awakening energy pouring into humanity. I'm really, really looking forward to seeing what beautiful things that that's going to manifest for people. Um, but like all births, we can't really celebrate the baby until we have finished the birthing process. So here we are in this second quarter. The half moon the other night was just absolutely beautiful. Absolutely, absolutely beautiful. I'm not sure if you were able to catch it, but it just had that really, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it's just that beautiful symbology of half that you can see and half that you can't see. And it's that duality. There's that half of us that we can see and that half of us that we can't see. And actually even more of that because we are so still connected to the non-physical realm into which we came. And I always feel like the, the dark side of the moon or the shadow of the moon is that sort of representation of those beautiful emotional components and parts of us and connection that we have that is the unseen. And so how the second quarter moon translate for us in the practical application in daily life. So if the new moon is where we plant seeds and set intentions and the full moon is about the um, the coming to fruition, the plans and the intentions set at the new moon, that period in between at the second quarter moon is about what we're doing to take something from thought to form. And a lot of times we get very action oriented and the energy certainly is action oriented. It's looking to see where we're putting our energy in order to complete or have come to fruition those projects and dreams and desires. We as humans though are very funny creatures and we tend to be very action oriented and feeling that our, and we've been taught that what you get out of life is a direct one for one match for how much energy that you put out into your life. And what I'm realizing and have been realizing for quite some time, and even knew very inherently as a child, that that's just not true. That we effort more in our lives with less results, causing things like anxiety, depression, frustration, feeling like you're not on your path, feeling like, what am I doing wrong? And often it's in the doing in and of itself that we can get caught up when doing is less of what we need to be putting our energy into and opening ourselves to receiving and really attracting in the things that we want and allowing and noticing where we're putting resistance up. So there's a fine balance. We do need to show up. We do need to know that when we get those impulses and those inspirations to act on our desires, we're moving in a much more intentional way. And so this is about looking at your actions and seeing if they're driven by your own intention and your own inspiration, or if your actions are really being driven and dictated by others. Now, that's not to say that that's necessarily a bad thing, because if we have responsibilities to others, part of showing up in those responsibilities and fulfilling our obligations can feel very satisfying and can put us in a position where we are then allowed to receive things in a way because we've showed up as a co-creative component in our work, in our lives, in our families. And when we do that, we're also allowing those co-creative components to show up and work with us to help manifest our dreams and what we're doing. So it's a lot about 
the things that you're putting your energy into and who's really driving the ship. Is it your mind? Is it your ego? Is it your heart? Is it the external factors in your life? So it's a, it's a dance, right? We do this dance with everybody and everything around us. But the conductor, the person who is at the front of the orchestra, who is who has not written the symphony, the writer of the symphony is really that beautiful non-physical energy that we've come from. And so our inner being is like the, um, the conductor of the orchestra. And all of our internal workings are the orchestra. Everything that makes us up, all the vibrations, all of our physical parts, all of our non-physical parts is like this beautiful orchestra. We think of, we've heard the saying, you know, a choir of angels. We have this orchestra of energy that is us. And so our inner being is like the conductor that helps us in the physical way connect to the non-physical part of us so that we're coming into our action and efforting less than if we were to come into action from just our minds or simply by letting other people pull our strings. And so puppeteering is definitely a lot of what we're seeing. There's always been puppeteering in humanity where people are pulling other people's strings either in a small sort of micro unit or in a very macro way, in a very larger scale way. And so when we allow ourselves to be puppeteered by something that doesn't serve us, we suffer for that. We suffer when we are out because what that does is if that's not in alignment and showing up in that way is not in alignment with your inner being, that's when you can feel depressed, anxious, just unhappy. Um, I think, you know, depression can be taken a lot of different ways, but you can just feel unhappy. You know, it doesn't have to indicate that there's, there's a difference between clinical depression and life invoked depression. And I believe that life invoked depression can sort of lead to clinical depression. And sometimes clinical depression, it comes from our chemistry of the hand that we were dealt at birth. And they're two very, very different things. So this is that period where we have to really pay attention to who's dictating. So if your life story is being written by everything around you and you're not happy with that story, you actually get to conduct or write or choose your own life story for yourself. And so just taking a step back, if you feel like a week ago, a week and a half ago, when you were thinking about the new things and where to from here, the where to from here is that after the completion, we come into where to from here. And so a lot of times, because again, we're action oriented, we're not just action oriented, but we also tend to be problem oriented instead of solution oriented. And so just the process of trying to think about bringing things into fruition, a lot of times people go right into problem solving mode, assuming that there's a problem right off the bat with what it is that you're trying to manifest. And so pulling back in that and saying, okay, is that even true? Is there even really a problem for resolution instead of um, trusting the process and trusting that it's going to unfold in a way that maybe is unpredictable or surprising, but unpredictable and surprising isn't necessarily negative. So how open are you to things that may come across as unconventional ways to get you to where it is you're trying to go? Or are you really stuck in your comfort zone of this is the way that I function? And maybe in that comfort zone, part of that comfort is giving your power away to external forces and external beings to make those decisions for you because of that inner rule keeper's way of looking at what's right and wrong in your life. And so this period of time is really just about looking at the inner workings of decision making, of decision making around action, around steps being taken. And so again, I love drawing off of this deck. So in the Moonology Oracle Cards by Yasmin Bolin, 
I drew a card for this particular reading and I pulled the new moon in Leo and it's a very beautiful, beautiful picture. So even though we're not in a new moon cycle right this moment, this is the energy of what we're being asked is about courage. And so the card is confidence is your key to success. And so as we're looking at the way that we're making decisions, are you confident enough in yourself to be making the decisions for yourself or are you giving away your power to something outside of you? So when we do that, and it's a very human thing to do. So this isn't about beating ourselves up for the things that we do. It's for recognizing what we're doing and sort of re-empowering ourselves to pull back from the places that we're giving away our energy. And so if you've handed over your power to other people to make decisions for you, it can then get you into a situation where if those people aren't making the decisions that you want them to be making, we get angry, we get resentful, we aren't really showing up in that situation anymore in a co-creative way, it becomes more of a dictatorship. And so we're looking at that in a global way right now around the way that this sort of dictator energy is coming across and people aren't feeling confident in the decisions being made for them. And if you're not feeling confident about making your own decisions for yourself, you may still allow others to make decisions for you that you know inherently are not in your best interest, but can feel really like you don't know what to do. And so I think it's fascinating too that on this day in 1990, Lithuania actually declared its independence from Russia. And so when we look at the global landscape of things that are going on, 1990 wasn't all that long ago. It was a very short period of time in, in the thousands and thousands of years that people have been on this planet. 30 years is, is really nothing. And so to think that it wasn't all that long ago that this country was able to create an independent, a state of independence from a country that we're now very much seeing in the news and the global landscape is shifting still, um, they, they, the confidence that it takes to, to have independence, to be independent. So no man is an island. We all are in this collectively. We all have intrinsic value together. However, that being said, the confidence of one individual can move mountains because truly it's the dreams and the visions of certain individuals that have helped light the way for other individuals to be able to make the necessary adjustments and changes in their own life to show up in a more authentic way and maybe declare some independence against the state of being that people don't desire being controlled by. And so there's a lot to, to take into consideration with, with all of that. So what is, how, do we, how do we physically assimilate all these things? Because all of this thinking affects our emotional state and our emotional state affects our physiological state. And so last week we discussed a breath of fire. So this wonderful breathing technique. And so I'm sitting a little further back so that we can get a really good full look um, of sort of where this breath of fire takes place. So if my belly button is down here and my sternum ends right about here. So my ribs come down here and it's the center place here. So this is really your, your solar plexus. And so again, this third chakra here, so I love this this um, banner behind me. So third chakra energy here, this yellow. So we're up here. So this energy, the second chakra we just came out of is sort of lower belly. First chakra is very root when you're sitting down, when you're touching the floor. And then fourth chakra going up is up here in the heart. So we've got air, um, fire, water, earth. And so breath of fire is connecting the element of air from the fourth chakra into the fire of the third chakra. So physiologically, that can help with digestion. Emotionally, it can help with the assimilation of our emotions and our feelings so that we can gain a little bit of clarity. It also helps with, with confidence. And so if you are lacking confidence in making the decisions that are better for you, this breath can really help you um, burn 
away anything that might be sabotaging your confidence and your ability to show up externally in the world. So we're going to work on this. <coughs> Excuse me. We are going to work with this breath. And so what we're going to do is, again, you can start with the mouth open or you can start with the mouth closed and breathe through the nose. Ultimately, you want to do your breathing through the nose because what that does is it warms the breath before it enters the lungs. And it also um, allows the cilia in the nose to clean the air before it enters the body. <coughs> Excuse me. So dry, it, it, which is so funny because even though it's raining outside, the atmosphere has this um, very dry quality to it, but we'll get into that in a whole nother video. So anyway, back to breath of fire. So we're really focusing on the solar plexus area. So sternum, belly button in between. So it's not a long, deep breath. It is a shorter breath. Breath of fire should always be done in a way that's sustainable and comfortable. And start out a little bit on the slower side and then allow as the, because it's counterintuitive the way that you, when you start doing it, you may find that your breath shifts. And so you'll notice your breath shifting if you feel a little bit lightheaded, if you feel like it's not sustainable, like something is off, pause and start over because there's a chance that your inhale and your exhale motion got flipped because that's what the brain wants to do. And so essentially the belly is coming out on the inhale and it's going in on the exhale, but we're not focusing on the lower belly here, like that big belly breathing when we're taking a nice deep breath. We're really coming down in, <coughs> excuse me, into the upper belly. So we're breathing in through the nose, if you can, through the mouth, if that's easier to do. So I'm pushing out through here. So my hand is coming in as I exhale and it's coming out as I inhale. So I'm filling the upper part of my balloon. So if this whole thing is like one big balloon, we're focusing on like the top of the balloon. And so we're just gonna inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. So it's a it's like navel pumping, but navel point pumping is really done more around the belly button itself where you bring that belly in and out. We're stoking the fire. So if you think of the fire here and one of those um, fire bellows, if you've ever seen them, so it's like the little accordion thing with the handles and it's got the um, nozzle on the other end. That's what people would use to blow on the fire. So we're essentially doing the same thing with our body and we're creating that, that motion this way by pumping this way. And so as you, like I said, you can start with your mouth open. And then go to closing the, the mouth and going through the nose. Either way, if you start two minutes, three minutes, work up to five minutes, you can really, you'll start to notice very quickly the energy increase, the balance that you may feel in your whole torso, the warmth, it will definitely make you warm. It's called breath of fire for a reason, that's for sure. And so like I said, we're really stoking that fire. And the other thing that it's doing is it's helping us to create a really great relationship with the heart center energy, which is where we're ascending to. So if year to year, if we go through these seven year cycles, and so this year we're here, next year it means we're here. And like I said before, that's where the love is at. I mean, the, the, the beauty of the work collectively is coming. Again, it just takes confidence. So we have to be confident in ourselves. You know, right now there's a waning confidence in a lot of systems. Um, and it's been coming for quite some time. And it can be really hard to maintain confidence when the outward appearance seems to be very shaky. And so, again, even coming down to the individual moon cycle of where we are in our own lives, if we're calibrating to the external world, if we're allowing our external circumstances to dictate how we feel about our own lives, that's what is considered sort of giving away your power to external circumstance. 
And so what do we do when we do that, when that happens? One of the first things that we tend to do is we try to then control the external circumstances around us in order to feel better. We want people to show up differently. <clears throat> we want circumstances to be different in order to feel better. And that I think is exactly where we're stuck. And I think that that, and we have been stuck there for quite some time. Um, but I think that that's also what's starting to shake loose is that people are recognizing that. And so if we are really going to make changes in our own lives, doing breath work, doing anything that can get you physically connected better to your body that allows you to get out of your mind and come down into this beautiful carbon unit that is here to help you enhance your experience, <clears throat> not make it more difficult is going to help, it's going to, to be better. So in, in this calibration process, so to calibrate to is to, so we calibrate tools, there's tools of calibration. So um, in one of my jobs, we have a quality control department and their job is to make sure that the tools that they use to make sure that what's being manufactured is to the drawing is they have tools to measure. And so these tools of measurement need calibration to make sure that they're measuring accurately. And so we as human beings are constantly trying to measure ourselves up against our external environment. And we do this in a myriad of ways. So the idea is to get away from allowing the external environment to be what you calibrate to and really allowing your internal environment, the confidence in yourself and your own tool as a being to calibrate to that. When you calibrate to your inner being, your thought process and your whole process, mind, body, and spirit really, of measuring where you are suddenly looks and feels different than when you're measuring yourself to what's outside of you. And so these past few years, especially where for people, if you have been more prone to calibrating yourself to the outside world, which again, when we're little, that's what we're told to do. You know, look at the environment around you, learn how to read a room. <laughs> you know, that's another great saying um, that has been sort of a lost art because we have been stuffed away into our own little rooms. And if you're in a room by yourself and a computer, it's much more difficult to read the proverbial room because you're the only one in your room sort of reflecting and mirroring back what's going on. And so just being able to bring it back to yourself and to not worry so much about what, you know, Joe's doing or what Mary's doing or you measuring, measuring ourselves up to other people doesn't work. We know this intellectually, but yet we still have a hard time with the practice. And so the idea is to understand that if you're your own tool of calibration, then you can't use your tool to calibrate somebody else and somebody else's being isn't your best tool of calibration. So just try to keep that in mind as we're in this period of the actions that are required to achieve the results that we desire. And so if you're utilizing other people's tools for your personal being in your project, you're gonna run into problems. And so one of the best things that you can do is just be aware. Just be aware of where, if you're getting frustrated with the people and circumstances around you, then maybe it's an opportunity to look at where those things have too much say and too much control over how and when and why you do the things that you're doing. So just a great awareness to have. I think that that really is um, the summary of the energy for this week. And so looking forward and rolling into this coming week, there's um, again, a lot of energy shifting. So Sunday the 13th, we have the um, daylight savings. So for people in areas where that is practiced, I have, um, my own feelings about the practice of daylight savings but regardless if you are in an area where that is a practice that is accepted and utilized and practiced we will change the clock so here 
in um, the northeast of um, the United States. On Sunday, we will be um, spring ahead, right? So springing ahead. So we're turning the clocks ahead an hour. Um, so the days will start to get longer on the other end of it. We will start to feel that building sun energy again, solar. So solar plexus, solar plexus is right here. So if you want to be able to really tap into that sun energy and have it support you, that breath of fire practice is, is a really beautiful way to do that. The other thing you can do is that right nostril breathing, which is blocking the left nostril and just breathing through the right. That's another great way to connect to that sun and very young and masculine and generating um, energy. So Sunday we have daylight savings. Next Thursday is um, St. Patrick's Day, again, in regions where that's celebrated. So there's this playfulness. There's this idea that the um, fairy realm and the fae, so there are these different veils of, of reality that we interact with. And so as we come into spring, um, the subtle beings that are nature spirits and otherwise associated with the rebirth process that's coming will start to really celebrate and celebrate with us and celebrate for us. And so try to find a lightheartedness to the world, your own personal world right now. Find some fun, find some play, because play and joy is really what this whole thing is about. It's not all serious. It's not all meant to be all about business and what are we accomplishing and that we are only the culmination of the things that we create or accomplish. That is so not the point. The point isn't the final product that we create. It's the fact that we're here as creative beings to continue to create. So really allowing yourself to interject fun and joy. This is, this is the, the reminder of the celebration and luck and good fortune and all these good wishes as we move into the new solar year. So next Friday, when we have our next report, it will be on the full moon. And I'm really excited to look at what has come to fruition and to do the sort of final um, waning into the um, the new moon and then moving into the this rebirth I I'm I'm excited I can really feel this building excitement even with all the uncertainty but that's the feeling of that that new parent you know you do you have that uncertainty of how we're going to take care of the new child, the new baby. How are we going to nurture it? How are we going to raise it? What beliefs and what values are we going to instill in this newness that work towards the growth that's just, you know, growing in the right and better direction for everybody? And subconsciously, these things may be coming up for you. You may be having these thoughts and sort of wondering where they're coming from. And it just is a good indication that you are energetically on track and really more plugged in than you may realize. And maybe that's not the experience you're having. And, and that's the beautiful thing about this journey is that everybody's experience is individual and there's no right or wrong way to do it. So just keep showing up as, as you be your authentic self, be playful, have fun, smile, laugh, Mask mandates are getting lifted left and right. This is beautiful. We can see people again. We can see emotion. We can see expression. We can recalibrate our socialness with people and be able to have interplays of emotion with each other by being able to visually take in what people have going on. I love it. I love seeing people's full faces and beautiful smiles and I just it just warms my heart it warms my heart so let's take all of that beauty moving forward with us what warms your heart what brings you joy what makes you smile where do you have fun how do you have fun play 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 let this be a rebirth for yourself individually maybe pick up an old hobby that you haven't thought of for a while but makes you really happy when you think about doing it joy is a funny thing it can get sabotaged by the reality right so when we think oh i would love to play that instrument i haven't played but the reality is i don't have time to do it that's baloney 
the reality is is that you can dictate your time and if it's something that brings you joy let yourself follow through with it don't allow things to get in the way self-sabotage is a funny thing and we all have the inner saboteur so we have these archetypes that um, we carry with us through our lives they're there to support us on our journey they help us show up in different ways where we are required to and so the saboteur is something that all of us have there's four archetypes that we all carry and so it's the victim um, the prostitute the saboteur and the inner child and so it's a very interesting it's it's a very interesting thing and we'll talk more about um, archetypes as we go to because understanding your archetypes and understanding your chakras and understanding how it all um, interplays together can just help to enrich your experience here this time around and so and just for a footnote too, prostitute means where you sell yourself short let's just make that very clear so I don't want to throw a word out there that um, has a very specific meaning in the language of archetypes and leave people hanging feeling like that has um, other connotations to it which it can if it shows up in your area of life of relationships you know but that's not the only place that we tend to sell ourselves um, short or not really give ourselves enough credit but really watching the saboteur because the saboteur is what can interfere our happiness or interfere with our happiness all very, very easily. And so again, it comes back to confidence. You know, do you have confidence enough in the end goal in do you have confidence enough in yourself that knowing when you are joyful, you're happy when you're happy, you can show up in better ways and trusting that the time that you allow yourself to spend doing those fun things is actually going to flow over and benefit all the other areas of our lives. So lots of things to take into consideration. Um, I've had a lot of fun thinking through these things and discussing them and just bringing the awarenesses, how they play into the cycle of where we're at in the lunar calendar, in the solar calendar, in the collective growth of humanity. Um, so till next week where we'll pick up and see what we've done in this past week and the joy that we've brought about and just really sitting back and reveling in our accomplishments so for this week moving forward just take these things into consideration practice your breathing try that breath of fire see how you feel recalibrate to yourself have some fun i think i've said fun a lot <laughs> it's clearly something that we need you know it's just more fun it's give yourself permission even if it's on your drive to work even while it's pouring your cup of coffee you know smile it really can just enliven your day in the most subtle way but the most significant way at the same time so mwah, i love you all i love being here with you i can't wait till next week but I'm also very happy being here in this present moment. So stay present, stay tuned, and we'll see you then. Take care. Thanks.